are asleep or those which are dead, what he is talking about. But he said that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So that tells you and I that those that die in the Lord, they go home to be with Jesus. They're at heaven this morning. They're with him. They're, you think about it. Now, you think about Jeanette, you know, Paul, your dad, your mom, your two children, they're with Jesus today. They're not suffering. They're at home. They're, they have uh, the peace of God. They have peace with God. Those that die with Jesus. <coughs> and the Bible says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and shall forever, it shall, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Let us bow for just a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would just open our hearts, our minds, and Lord, help us receive thy word with gladness. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. As we come to Father's Day, you know I begin to think about this as uh, the, a Father's Day message. This is what we need to be teaching our children as uh, we enter into this day and uh, teaching them to understand and to be ready for this time in their life as well as you being ready in your life. And we also read in John chapter 14, and we find this, this in John 14, 1 through 6, and I want us to, uh, and we, this is very familiar, and he, he, Paul, uh, John was writing here and telling him, he said, but let not your hearts be troubled, that ye believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But he said, I go. Now here, now Paul, the, the Christ, this is in the red letters, but he is, he is telling them here that Jesus promised to come again. Now listen to what he said. He said, I go to prepare a place, a place for you. And so this is what we need to be telling our children. Now, you know, a lot of times, now the, well, we'll say, well, now you got to be good. The devil's going to get you. We got to be, you got to do this or the devil, this and that and the other. Instead of that, you need to be telling them to live the, live and straighten up your life and get your life under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and live for God. But he said, he said, here I go to prepare a place for you. But he said, if and if I go, and if I go. Now look at that word and. He said, and if I go. He said, I'm going. But he said, and if I go, he said, and prepare a place. He said, I will come again. Boy, I thank God he's coming again. He's coming again. We need to be listening for a shout. We need to be listening, but have our ear turned toward the sky. For a Christian, this coming of the Christ will be a great day. It's coming again. He said, for I will come again and receive you unto myself. Uh, for where I am, there you may be also. That's a conditional measure in the Word of God. You can be ready or you might not be ready, but it's up to you. You need to tell your children, you need to have your family 
ready to meet God. But he also said in verse number four, he said that whether I go, you know, and the way, you know, we've got to teach them. And brother, the word of God tells us here that we need to teach our children the way to go because there's coming a day. And I thank God that one day the Lord will shout. Brother, it's not going to be, but the angels are shouting. It's not going to be that, brother, I believe. The shout is coming from God Almighty. Brother, when the shout comes from the sky, there's going to be a time, brother, like, like it's never been. And the shout will come, and the angels will sing, and I believe the trumpets is going to sound. Well, who's going to hear it? Brother, I believe the children of God's going to hear it. Uh, and I believe those that's really been born again uh, are going to hear this. Uh, and the Lord will come uh, in the clouds of glory. Uh, and I believe God's going to let down a Holy Ghost elevator, uh, brother, and you think about it. Uh, and I'm just going to step on board and hallelujah, I'm going to be gone. Uh, I'm going up. Uh, brother, it's going to be a time that's never been. Uh, brother, but listen, uh, I want to go through this just as quickly as I can this morning. Uh, in the next 15, 20, or 20, 25 minutes at the very most. Uh, but there's five things that I want us to look at real quickly. Uh, we are watching uh, for a Savior. Uh, we need to get this implanted uh, in our children uh, that we are watching. Uh, now look in First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, but look in verse number 16 uh, and look what the Word of God says, uh, what Paul uh, is trying to embed uh, in the minds of the people there. Uh, he said, now for the Lord Himself... Uh, the Lord Himself, uh, you know, the song, it, and I've said this in times past uh, from this pulpit here. Uh, well, uh, I want the same angel to come after me. It came after Mama. There ain't no angel coming after me, uh, and there ain't no angel come after my Mama. Brother, God Himself come after Mama, and God Himself's coming after me. Uh, brother, but listen to what the Bible says. Uh, For the Lord Himself, Himself shall descend from heaven. Uh, he came and got old Stephen, uh, and God's coming after me. Uh, brother, uh, but listen to what he said. Uh, he said, For the Lord Himself shall descend uh, from heaven with a shout. Uh, brother, uh, uh, God is coming back after me one of these days. Uh, brother, uh, listen, look in Matthew uh, in chapter 24 uh, and verse number 42. Uh, listen to what what God said over here. Uh, God said uh, this uh, in verse number 42. Uh, he said uh, this very, very thing. Uh, he said, watch therefore, uh, for you know not what hour uh, the Lord doth come. Uh, you don't know what hour the Lord's a coming. Uh, he said, didn't say, uh, you don't know uh, what hour the angel is coming. Uh, he never said that. Uh, he said, you don't know what hour the, the Lord's a coming. Uh, brother, the Lord's coming one of these days. Uh, look in verse number 16 again. Uh, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven uh, with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, uh, with the trump of God. Uh, brother, and the dead in Christ. Uh, brother, if you die in Christ, uh, God Himself uh, is coming after you. Uh, he is coming in person. Uh, he's coming in person. Uh, he's coming in power. Uh, and not only that, uh, but God is coming with a purpose. Uh, he's coming with one thing uh, in, uh, uh, up on his mind. He's coming after you uh, that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, if you've been cleansed, uh, brother, that's what God is. God is not coming after uh, one that's never been washed in the blood. Uh, God's not coming after those. Uh, God's coming after them uh, 
that he died for upon the cross of Calvary. Uh, those that uh, he shed his blood for. Uh, God uh, came, uh, and when he came, uh, he came uh, for, with a purpose uh, and the same purpose uh, that he had uh, and did have on his mind uh, for the same children uh, that were down in Egypt. Uh, brother, uh, when the blood was put on the doorpost uh, and on the lintel, uh, brother, they were behind the blood uh, and under the blood. Uh, and God said, when I see the blood, uh, I'll pass over them, uh, brother. Uh, and and God left them uh, and saved them uh, and sealed them from death. Uh, and God is going to save me uh, from eternal death uh, and damnation uh, through the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, and that's the purpose uh, that God is going to keep me from. Uh, brother, when the shaft comes from heaven, uh, God's going to keep me from death through the blood of the Lamb of God. And dads, we need to teach our children that is what the resurrection and the rapture is all about. We need to understand what the, uh, the, the rapture of the, the dead in Christ is all about. We need to be listening for the truth of this book. There's a truth here. This is not a fable. This is not something that man wrote on the spur of the moment. Not only that, we are watching for a Savior. Number two, we are walking by the Scriptures. We are walking by these Scriptures from day to day. I'm going tomorrow, if God lets me live, by this book. Amen. I'm going to make an, I'm going to make another journey, another 24 hours, if God lets me live, by this book. And the thing about it is, look in Psalm number 119, 105. Listen to what the Word of God says. God says it very explicitly. He said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What that is so simple. It's a lamp. It's a, it's a light to a pathway that leads home. It's home. This world is not my home. I am just a passing through. The scriptures are inspired of God Almighty. Second Timothy, Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Listen to what the Word of God says. It's very, very, very simple. It, it's, it's, it's real. And it says here, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, and listen to this, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Did you hear that? Oh, that's to the preacher. I beg your pardon. Every dad, every man of God needs to be thoroughly furnished with the book of God. Every man of God, every dad, every home ought to be furnished with the perfect Word of God. Every man, listen, God's going to hold every dad accountable, every man accountable for his home. You're going to give an account for your home, dad. You're going to give an account for that. Listen, let me read it again. That ever, that the man of God may be perfect. You're not perfect in this world, but you're to strive for perfection. 
How can you strive for perfection? You're to strive it through the Word of God. You're to teach your children. You're to, now how do you teach a child? You lead them. You lead them. You get them by the hand. You teach it. Train up a child in the way it should go. And when it gets old, when a child leaves your home or gets out of your care, listen, you're not, you can't, you can't be, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. When they get old and they're out from under your roof, listen, brother, you can't make them, you can't make them. My son is gone. My daughter is gone. Sammy, they're under your roof now. They're under your roof. James, your family's under your roof now. Tony, Jake, Michael, they're under your roof. Adam, your child is under your roof. You're going to give an account of how you raise them. It says, uh, listen to what I am talking about. And the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Dad, that person, you met me day by day. And you knew I was astray, but you never mentioned him to me. What was it Preacher Paul said? These two people live side by side. One went to church and the other went fishing. One day, the one that went to church went over, said, well, he never spoke to him or something. I forget exactly how it went. Said, well, he never did speak to him or something. Said, well, said, I thought you'd, in, I'd invite you to church because you never invited me to go to fishing with you. It's time we invited somebody to church. It's time and past time. Brother, somebody needs to see us. Not only that, the Scriptures were inspired. The Scriptures are instructive. I just read them to you. They're instructive. It plainly says here, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. There is no righteousness in this old boy. But boy, they sure are in him. How do I get that? I go to church. That's it. The thing about it is, Scripture is infallible. Second Peter. Look in Second Peter in the Word of God. Let's see what it says. In chapter 1, verse 19. And the Bible says, For, listen, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now listen to verse 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The New Testament, the living Bible, 
the non-inspired version and all of that crowd, brother's going to burn in hell for trying to change the Word of God. Brother, you can't change the Word of God to fit your life. You need to change your life to fit God's Word. Oh, I'll tell you. Think about it. Number three, we're witnessing the signs right now. The political world, brother, all it'll do is give you ulcers if you get involved with it. The thing about it in Matthew 24, verse number 36 through 39, listen to what the Word of God's telling us there. I mean, it's a pitiful mess all the way around. You think about it. It's just, it's, it's really, it's just a mess. But listen to Matthew 24, verse 36. And the Bible says this. He said, But of that day and of hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now listen to verse 12, 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, and so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All they're doing is playing church. Playing it. Oh, the wickedness in high places. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter number three, verses one through five. Listen. Know this also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own uh, the selves, covetous, boasters, plowed, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that do good, traitors, heady, high-minders, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness, listen, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. What are we looking at? We're looking at the same thing that's going on right now. The world is in a war right now. We're in a world of persecution. We're in a political contest all across the world. And Paul was talking about this right now. We were living with God's people all across the world. Every way you turn, dads were going to give an account. We're going to give an account. The political fields, the political, the world of pleasure is filled up. The house of God is empty. Not only that, but number four, we are to win the sinner. We're to win the sinner, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you all way, even unto the end of the world. That's when the church will be raptured out. We got a job to do, dads. Moms, we got a we got a job to do. Number five. Back to verse number sixteen in our text this morning. For the Lord Himself shall descend. The Lord will shout. The angels were singing, 
and the trumpets is going to sound. But how many of us are we are we really waiting for a shout? Are we listening? Are we looking? Are we waiting? Are we really, really trusting in the Lord to go to heaven? You know, as I begin to make a few notes on this and study about this last night and got up early this morning and went in there and begin to go over this and look at it and begin to and in first Thessalonians and chapter number five in the latter part of it chapter five it said rejoice in verse number 16 of chapter 5 it said rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing then you drop down to verse number 19 and it said quench not the spirit and all of these all of these and it says, despise not prophesying and, uh, and prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all, from all the appearance of evil. All of these things right there, it's a sin if you don't do it. That's a sin. You sat in here this morning and God said, quench not the Spirit. Preacher, I couldn't hardly sit here today. I wanted just to stand up and say, thank God I'm saved. I just wanted to say, praise the Lord. That's quenching the Spirit. That's a sin. That's a sin in your life. Pray without ceasing. How many of us really go through the day with not with a prayer not on our heart? And how many Sunday mornings? Brother Jake, do you get up here and say, do you not have a prayer request? And I've thought so many times, you might not have a verbal or a voiced prayer request, but would you just like to reach up toward heaven and say, raise your hand, I've got a request. Pray without ceasing. God bless you, Joanne. I've got a request. I want all of my church, my church family, I want you all to go to heaven with me. Oh, dear God. Oh, God, Polly. If I got there and you wasn't there, boy, I'd break my heart. But I won't know it. But Tony, what if I got there and you wasn't there? (laughs) 
But Nick, what if I got there? What if, I, what if we got there and we did know it? And Stephanie, we got to looking for faces. And God, I didn't raise my hand. God, I didn't pray for them. Jake, I didn't, I didn't answer you when you said you got a prayer request. I didn't pray for you. May I didn't I didn't pray for my children like I should, my grandchildren. When the word of God said, pray without ceasing. I let you down. This book said, preach the word. Preach it. Stand on the word of God. Stand true to it. Don't you be a hypocrite, Dean. Don't you be something. That, don't you be. Something you're not. You stand on that book. I want to listen for that shout. I want to listen. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, oh God, tune my ears. And tune my heart toward glory. Oh God set my soul on fire. For God that lost soul. That precious soul that's lost without God. Oh precious Jesus. God don't let me. God be that one, that missed one. Oh, God, let me stand true to this book. God, help me, Lord, to stand on the Word of God and be that dad, that Pastor, God, that Christian, that soul winner, God, that person, God, that you can say, well done, God, that's what I want to hear. God, I pray today, Lord, would be the day God, is there one or more in this church room, in this little room today, in this number here today, Lord, if there's one or more, Lord, that needs to come to this altar, if there's a need in their heart or their life, a person on their mind, God, a need any way, form, or fashion, God, today is the day, Lord, God, today, Lord Jesus, God, they'll make him that thing right.